This week is all about getting your vision right, knowing exactly what your target is, and making the changes to your plans in order to achieve whatever that target is, whatever that goal is. How's it going, everybody? My name is Cam White, and welcome back to the Astrology Report, this time for December 11th through December 17th of 2023. We are almost done with the year. If you haven't already, make sure you watch your year ahead uh, horoscope for your rising sign or your sun sign. Boy, did those take a lot of energy and time, but they're a labor of love. Uh, so make sure you guys check those out to know exactly what 2024 is going to look like. Uh, however, we have quite a bit of highlights this week, so let's just go ahead and get talking about it. So we're starting the week off on Monday with the moon ingressing into Sagittarius and squaring Saturn. So again, while the moon's in Sag, there's a little bit more of a feeling of fun and adventure and feeling excited. But I just think as the moon immediately ingresses into Sagittarius and squares Saturn, that vision or that target becomes harder to see. Like I think a lot about Saturn and Pisces as like hesitation or, you know, if you don't really believe in the possibility of that happening, then it's going to make, make it much more difficult for you to actually like achieve it if you don't actually believe it. And I just think with a lot of the Saturn and Pisces stuff, it, again, who do you have to be on the inside in order to achieve that goal? Who do you have to become in order to achieve that goal? And this is a big part of this week as we get to the new moon in Sagittarius, which happens um, on Tuesday, which we'll talk about. But this is the dark moon. The moon is in Sagittarius with the sun. This is really kind of recalibrating, again, getting clear of what our vision is. And as the moon goes into Sagittarius at first, um, our, our emotions are much more connected to that, being like, all right, what am I excited for? Where do I want to grow? Where are the opportunities? But again, as it squares Saturn, there's a resistance. There's a, um, again, a frustration, a, a wall that you're kind of hitting. And I think another thing too with it squaring Saturn is like just having realistic goals. You know, um, you don't want to set goals up that are so, that, that will immediately um, ruin your, like you don't have expectations that you can't achieve. You see this all the time in like the personal development world. It's like people will set up a goal that is so big and large that, you know, they're probably not going to hit it. And then it, you know, they have these high expectations, they don't achieve it. And then they result, they, they, they revert back to their, you know, negative beliefs like, oh, of course I couldn't do that. Of course it's me. I'm the problem. My life sucks. I'm a horrible person. I don't deserve X, Y, and Z. And the way out of this is just setting a goal that you can't not hit. You know, I learned this the other day with, um, uh, I don't remember if it was like an Alex Ramosi post or if it was something with Rick Rubin, but it's like, for example, like with my, like, you know, music, which again, make sure you're staying tuned. That's all coming out next month. I'm super excited to talk more about it. And of course you guys will be more up to date, but it's like, I can't make a goal that's like out of my control. Like I would love for my first song to get a million streams, but that's out of my control. So one of the goals I can make is how about I make a goal of how many songs I want to produce in that year. I can make a goal of how, you know, being able to create music videos for them. I can make a goal that is within my control and that when I do hit it, I could still get that uh, gratification of I was able to achieve my goal that I set out for. And so you don't want to set a goal that is out of your control. You want to set a goal that is in your control, that is within your domain that you can still be proud of yourself for. And there's a balance to that. Again, this is all going to be super specific to what you guys are doing. But I just look with the moon and Sagittarius scoring Saturn and Pisces. It's like, okay, you know, if your goal is to make a million dollars in the next like six months, like, okay, that's, you know, maybe not as realistic as, okay, maybe you have a business, like how many, you know, uh, calls do you want to do? How many sales do you want to do? How much content do you want to make around it? Making a goal that is both realistic and that is, you know, um, in your control and not outside of your control, I think is a good way to look at the moon and Sagittarius squaring Saturn. It's like, okay, let's, let's not get too delusional with it. Let's make something realistic that we can hit, even though that requires like a reframing of what the goal even is. The other, uh, the big highlight that we have on Monday is Mercury is also going to make a sextile to Venus. Um, I like this because as Venus is in Scorpio and there's this, you know, what I've noticed with Venus and Scorpio is that like, it's so much easier said than done um, with that idea of, oh, I have, you know, I want to have pleasure. I want to have fun and enjoy things, but it's in detriment. So it's like, oh, okay, let me enjoy the unorthodox or let me enjoy, you know, more of the pain. Let me enjoy going without pleasure. It's so much easier said than done. And the way I look at it is, you know, if you're like me, I've been struggling getting myself to actually do those things. Um, it's been more so like Venus in detriment than more so like, you know, hacking Venus for me. It's just been like, oh, I'm not enjoying this. And, you know, I'm, I'm not having the fun. I'm not enjoying the thing that I want to. 
And I think that's okay. But what I love about Mercury here making a sextile to Venus is Mercury in Capricorn is just having a plan. You know, um, I would have talked about this last week in terms of if you are trying to get rid of something or stop doing something, like again, like let's say, you know, you are a craving a substance that you were like previously addicted to. Um, you know, you can't just sit there and wallow in that. Like you have to come up with some sort of a plan um, in order to combat that, in order to do something else. You have to replace it. And I just look at Mercury sextiling Venus is like, okay, a lot of this week is about changing up the plans with Mercury retrograding in Capricorn, right? Like restructuring our system, reorganizing things. And I just look at Mercury sextiling Venus as, okay, how can I implement some sort of a system or a plan to combat this negative feeling with something else? Um, again, all of this is very hyper-specific to each individual one of you. These general weekly horoscopes are, again, the general vibe. You're going to have to put the pieces together of what it looks like for you. But that's kind of the idea is, um, especially with Mercury even being about communication, just if this has to deal with relationships for you, communicating something where it's like, okay, Venus is in Scorpio. Maybe you're in an unhappy relationship and things, you know, fall apart. It's like have a plan and a system to, you know, communicate better with your partner. But that's the Mercury sextile Venus. And I think that's good with the moon going into Sagittarius with this like dark moon is like, all right, let's recalibrate our vision. Let's recalibrate our goal. And for the times when we are uncomfortable, um, we have a plan and a system to uh, implement to help us, you know, get out of that funk. The, we, we then get to Tuesday and on Tuesday, the moon's just going to be conjoining Mars most of the day. And this is frustrating because the thing is with the uh, moon conjoining the, uh, conjoining the Mars, with moon, the moon conjoining Mars, it is a restlessness. It is a, I want to go now. I want to go fast. Why am I not achieving the results I want right now? And I think a big part of that is Jupiter. You know, Jupiter rules Sagittarius. So Jupiter is um, working for Mars at the moment and the sun. And Jupiter is not only retrograde and in Taurus, like it's a slow sign uh, and it's retrograde. It's moving backwards. It's almost motionless. Like Jupiter is getting ready to station direct in I think the next two weeks. So it's really slow moving right now, but you have Mars and Sagittarius where it's like, I want to go, I want to get here, I want this goal, and that's just not how it works at this moment. So I think the moon conjoining Mars is that restlessness, that wanting to go, but on Tuesday, we have the new moon in Sagittarius. So while there is that restlessness of wanting to go, this is kind of the time to calibrate, again, what our goal is, what our target is, what is our point B, where are we going? Now, the way I would look at this is if you know anything about motorcycle racing, like dirt bikes, there's a gate. So you have like 30 dirt bike riders all lined up at a gate and the gate is like, here's, um, do I have a circle anywhere? Yeah, I do. So like, here's the front tire and here's the gate. The second the gate goes down, then the bike goes, but that gate's hold up there. Now those dirt bike riders, they don't just sit there with their bikes turned off. They have their bikes on and they're revving it like full force. Like they're ready to blast off. That's how I look at this. I, at least this potential energy with Jupiter about, you know, ready to station direct here in a couple of weeks. We're not at that yet, but it's like, you know, you don't want to jump the gate. You don't want to let drop the clutch, you know, pop the throttle and hit the gate because now you're going to be behind from everyone else. So I look at the moon conjoining Mars as like you're revving up that engine, but you're behind a gate and that's okay. But the new moon in Sagittarius is really asking, where, what is your goal? Where are you going? What is the vision that you have to implement? And while you may not be in a situation in which it is time to enact everything, right now it's just about having clarity about what it is that you want to do, where it is that you want to go, and what it's going to look like. Because while Mercury is in shadow, and we're about to get to Mercury retrograde here in a second, we have to undergo a change of our plans, a change of our system, a change of, you know, the structure in which we get there in order to achieve that goal. Right now on Tuesday, it's just about the vision. What is the vision of where you want to get to? What is the ultimate ideal that you would like to get? You have to kind of dream of it first and then, you know, of course, um, reverse engineer your way to there. But that leads us to Wednesday. And on Wednesday, I mean, it, Mercury, I'm going to talk about Mercury stationing retrograde first because then the lunar transits will make more sense. Um, but Mercury stations retrograde at like midnight, one o'clock in the morning here, Mountain Central Time. And so with Mercury stationing retrograde, it's like, okay, what, are the, what is the system? What are the plans? What, are the, uh, what, are, what is the structure in which I'm going to do things? And this is, again, restructuring things. Um, I look at Mercury and Capricorn as like business plans. Um, you can even look at it as like a blueprint for a building. 
there's so many different ways of analogizing that, but essentially it is, you know, Mercury's logistics, um, communication, ideas, and it's in Capricorn. It's just brass facts. It's just, you know, what is the goal? What is the, you know, uh, system to get us there? And as Mercury goes retrograde, we have to change these plans. Like, okay, now that we have our goal, now that we know exactly where we want to go, what needs to change from there? And this is going to involve delays. Like you might get to a point on Tuesday where you get clear about what your goal is. And then you look at the system that you're implementing and you might say, this isn't going to work. And so now I have to change these. And that's okay. Like if you are so uh, hell bent on, you know, just getting everything done right. And, and right now, like it's, it's not going to work, which what I love about astrology is just like, it's just the weather. I'm assuming most of you aren't feeling that way, but maybe you guys can work on being more open to being like, okay, what plans do I have to change over the next three weeks? Because here's the thing, Jupiter stations direct on December 31st and, Jan and Mercury stations direct on January 1st. So the time to move forward is the beginning of the year. And from here until there is about getting everything in place and getting everything ready to make those changes. But as Mercury goes retrograde, this is like, all right, let's look back at these plans. What's a more efficient, more optimized way of, you know, your schedule or even the way that you communicate? Um, this is the same thing too. If you're a cancer rising and this is about relationships, this is about renegotiating and changing the way that you interact in relationships. Like what is the system? Like if the system is just yelling in conflict that that may not work, you might have to be a little bit more you know, um, lawyer about it. You have to be a little bit more cold. You have to be a little bit more, you know, just mature in how you handle relationships. This might even be about friends where like Mercury retrograding in your 11th house, that would make you what? Aquarius, Pisces. Um, this might have to be going back and, um, you know, rearranging the time that you spend with friends. There might be some delays in, you know, your community, but this, I mean, Mercury is also going to go retrograde back into your 10th house for the Pisces rising. So a lot of that's about career stuff too. But anyway, I just look at this as we need we need to have a structural change to how we're going to be doing things. And that's what starts on Wednesday. Now, what's nice about that is on Wednesday, the moon will ingress into Capricorn. It will be trining Jupiter throughout most of the day, and then it will conjoin Mercury by the end of the evening. And so again, you guys know what I say about the moon in Capricorn, being more detached and being more just focused on the work and not being so involved in your emotions. Like I've said this time and time again, when you're at work and you're flustered with, you know, what's going on in your personal life and everything like that, it's so much harder to do anything versus like when you go to work and you can just kind of let go of your outside world and just do the job that's in front of you. It's like you're, it, it allows your subconscious to process more of what you're going through without immediately like putting it to the forefront of your consciousness. And so I look at the moon and Capricorn as like, it's, you know, quote unquote, business as usual. Like, let's just focus on business. Let's focus on the work. Let's take a day to just, you know, focus on, again, what does this uh, change uh, mean? What does this change look like? Then as the moon trines Jupiter, again, slow and steady wins the race. You don't have to get everything done right now. And I think as the moon uh, trines Jupiter all day, there is this nice consistent feeling like, like, okay, again, if I prep for things right now in the right way, and I do everything right the first time, and I don't half-ass anything, that is going to allow me for much more room for you know um, progress and success later on. And then the moon will conjoin Mercury by the end of Wednesday, where this is, again, more of a connection. Like, I've been using this term a lot with my you know readings, is like, a lot of this transits of December are just connecting dots. Um, and I think as the moon conjoins Mercury, we're connecting the dots of like, okay, Here's where I can really, you know, put my emotional attention to what, you know, plans need to be changed. And sometimes that's, it's easier said than done. Like it's easier to be like, oh, I'm going to, you know, do this and I'm going to change that. But then when you actually sit down and be like, okay, I, I have to actually make those changes, it gets a little bit more difficult. And with the moon in Capricorn, it's just like taking your emotions out of it. Like you don't have to react or respond to it. It just is the way that it is. And so I look at the moon conjoining Mercury as like, being able to take our emotions out of it. You like, for example, if you work in a business and you had a plan that you thought would work really well for the business and it didn't work and someone else has a different plan, you kind of have to say, okay, like I'm not going to take that personally. Like the results are what they are. Um, so we're going to implement this other person's plan. We're going to look at it and you know, we're going to just go from there. You can't take it personally and like have this emotional resistance to it. Like, you know, results speak for themselves. And so we get to Thursday and on Thursday, the moon while it's in Capricorn will make a sextile to Venus when you talk about the moon and Venus, you're talking about the more feminine planets. Like again, we're talking about like our emotions, our feelings, uh, more of the yin energy. 
and they're both not doing well. They're both in their detriment. So I think this kind of like safety nurturing, you know, again, feminine energy is very weak here. But the moon sextiling Venus is like, there's a time and place for it. And right here, it's like, again, finding, you know, what I've been saying, like finding pleasure through pain. But I look at the moon and Capricorn sex telling Venus is again, more of that connection to like, hey, if I can just detach my emotions from this and I can work on myself without being so emotional about it, I can get the results that I want. Although it may not be a fun process. Like just sometimes you just have to do the work. And even though you don't want to do the work, even though it's, um, and I'm, I'm going through this personally myself, like there's times where, you know, the work is fun. There's sometimes where you just dread it and it just hangs over you. And this is one of those days where you just have to, you know, get over yourself and still do it anyway. And I personally think there's a lot of room for a breakthrough there. However, there's also the, you know, possibility of just like, you know, crossing your arms and shaking and saying no and being like, I don't like this and this isn't what I want and I'm not having fun. And, um, you know, you can whine and complain if you want. I just don't think that's the best use of your time and energy. I don't think you will walk away feeling better from that versus a lot of this is like, well, the astrology says that it may not be that easy to have fun right now. It, that may not be an option and that's okay. You will have days later on where things are fun and exciting. And you're having a good time, but just on Thursday, there's a little bit of this crankiness and, um, you know, emotion, not being emotionally fulfilled. And, you know, you can, you know, take what it is, you know, you're going to have good days and bad days and still do the things that you need to do. Or you can sit in that and sulk in that and ruin your attitude and ruin your day. But then later on on Thursday, after the moon sextiles Venus, it will be trining Uranus. There is an opportunity for either one, a breakthrough or two, a, um, uh, a creative and inspired new way to, you know, have a solution. Like, for example, something that I've been really working with has been, the possibility of a third option. And this is really hard for me. I'm very black and white. Like it's either this, I either do this or that. And there's no in between. And I've been working a lot on like, what is the third way? What is, what is the way that I can't seem to see at this moment? You know, cause I like when I'm decided on something, it's like, nope, it, this is the fucking way it is, or it's not that way. And that's just like, I, that's just my attitude. Um, it's not the, it's sometimes helpful and sometimes harmful. And lately I've, I've been finding it more harmful. And I've just been trying to step back and be like, what is the third option here? What is a way that, you know, I'm not seeing that could actually be a win-win? And I look at the moon shining Uranus is allowing a space for there to be, you know, again, an innovative new way of thinking of things. Like Mercury's retrograde too. There's always like, that. that's what's fun about Mercury retrograde is like, we have to go backwards in our thoughts. We have to like, again, like, it, like Mercury retrograde in Capricorn just reminds me of reverse engineering. Like rather than building it from the top, uh, from the bottom up, you just like take it from, you know, what the finished project is and, you know, work yourself backwards there. And a lot of the times that can just help you understand it better. And so I just look at the moon and Capricorn trying your honest is there's, uh, there's an opportunity to do something different and have an opportunity for a different result or a, a different path to take that you may not even be thinking of. So maybe lean into that a little bit. We get to Friday. Um, on Friday, the moon is going to ingress into Aquarius and it will be squaring Jupiter by the end of the evening. So, you know, the thing is with the moon and Aquarius squaring Jupiter, it a lot of me has been like really stuck on like moon and Aquarius squaring Jupiter and Taurus. Like what even is that? And I look at the moon and Aquarius as, again, for one, like your basic moon and Aquarius delineation is like, okay, your emotions are more connected to society and people possibly being more rebellious, possibly being more interconnected. Either way, your emotions are really connected to people either because they're, it's very strong or it's very uh, repulsive. But as the moon squares Jupiter, I mean, Aquarius too is going to be like ideas, thoughts. It's very scientific. Um, the moon squaring Jupiter is like you can't, I don't know. And I've, and I've always talked about Aquarius as being kind of like mental gymnastics sometimes. Um, the moon in Aquarius making a square to Jupiter and Taurus is like there's no mental gymnastics that are going to get you out of like, I guess, doing the work or at least, you know, for example, um, you know, I talk a lot about Alex Hermosi. He is a business person. Um, so it may not relate fully like on the surface to a lot of you guys, but 
my God, does he have like the perfect personal development nuggets. And just one of the things that he he posted that I thought a lot about, he's like, you know, because he's worth like a fucking bajillion dollars. And he's just like, I didn't, you know, I didn't have to do, I didn't have to have a perfect morning routine or a perfect schedule or do cold plunges and sauna in order to get where it is I went. Like I just had to do the work. And I look at that moon in Aquarius going Jupiter and Taurus. It's like maybe trying to like find other ideas and find other ways of creating the solutions. But it's just kind of like, you know, how much time are you wasting trying to, you know, get everything slightly perfect when it's just like, you know exactly what it is that you have to do. I think the moon in Aquarius too, squaring Jupiter is um, things not moving as fast as you want. Maybe being a little bit more connected to, for example, it's like when you start listening to other people's opinions about what you should do, or like if you are saying like, oh, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, let me, you know, YouTube how to do it. And you start listening to everyone's opinions, you get kind of overwhelmed of what to do. And it could stall on that progress. And so I just think as the moon squares Jupiter, there's a little bit of that, like trying to see other perspectives, trying to see other opinions um, and feeling that lack of like, oh, now I'm so overwhelmed with the, with information that now I don't really know what to do. Um, I think another part of that, like the flip side of that is there is an opportunity for you to be more open-minded to other people's ideas in order to push that. Because again, the moon's in like the superior position to Jupiter and Taurus in, on this situation. Like that's the thing with the moon and Aquarius squaring Jupiter is like the moon's in the superior position. So the moon is kind of commanding the situation. So one of that would be like, hey, you're getting too involved here and that's why this is not moving as fast as you want. But two, it's like, okay, maybe you really actually do need to listen to other people's opinions. Maybe you do need to take a little bit more insight as to how this can help you, you know, move forward towards your goal. Because it's like, it's so funny when you do something one way and you think it's the only way and then you see someone else do it in like half the time and super and a lot better. And then you actually get out of your own way and you listen to them and you start to implement it and you see the changes. That's how, that's how I look at this. So this is a, a good day to maybe get out of your own mind and see different perspectives in order to move forward. But another time is uh, another way of looking at it is maybe just being too overwhelmed with all the other options and again, stalling that progress, stalling that forward movement. Then we get to Saturday and on Saturday, the moon will first make a square to Venus and then it will sextile Mars. So the moon making a square to Venus is, um, <laughs> that doesn't sound fun. Um, it just, the moon in Aquarius squaring Venus and Scorpio reminds me of like, the goth kid who looks at the other goth and emo people and they're like, they're not goth enough. That's not emo enough. You don't actually know what emo is who, and like for all of us, emo goth people, we've always, we've been that person before. Um, like that's like the moon and Aquarius squaring Venus and Scorpio is very like, um, poser energy. Um, <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way. Like if you have that, it's just more of like that attitude is, is really there. Um, and Venus and Scorpio is in the superior position to this, you know, lunar square, even though the moon is applying to it. And so it's, you know, another way I would look at the moon and Aquarius squaring Venus and Scorpio is like, okay, if you're into like, let's say goth stuff, let's say you're, you're 16, you're wearing, you know, all black with like the white face makeup and you go to your parents for like, or your family, you go to your family dinner, um, wearing that. Are you going to be shocked when you're not going to get approval and they're just kind of like, okay, fucking weirdo. Um, that's kind of the vibe with the moon um, in Aquarius squaring Venus and Scorpio. It's like, yeah, people may not like exactly what that is. Um, your audience may not care for what that is, even though, because again, they're not in your niche, you know, they don't understand that, um, that worldview. And so I think another way I would look at it is just the moon squaring Venus is again, struggling with pleasure, struggling with like, okay, how can I enjoy, like not being able to enjoy things fully the way that you want to. And I think another way of looking at it is um, the moon in Aquarius is getting other people's opinions and ideas, um, sharing with a kind of a community and with it squaring Venus in Scorpio is like, you may hear things that you just don't like. Um, you know, for example, uh, this isn't actually that good of an example, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Um, for all the Huberman listeners, God damn, as someone who smokes cigarettes, Andrew Huberman, stop telling me nicotine is good for me or that it's like it's good. I don't I don't need to hear that nicotine is super good for my brain. That's the last thing I need to hear. Don't tell me that. Um, that's how that's how I look at the moon and Aquarius squaring Venus and Scorpio. Like it's just like, oh no, I don't want to enjoy this thing, but you're giving me a reason to be like, nicotine's actually good for my brain and it's super optimized. So 
I just look at the moon in Aquarius squaring Venus and Scorpio as like, hey, other people's uh, opinions and ideas are probably going to go against like exactly what it is that you want. Um, there may be this kind of like resistance there. And then the moon after that makes a sextile to Mars and Sagittarius where I, I just think a thing of it is kind of letting go of that and still doing your thing anyway. Um, not being too worried about what the audience thinks. The moon will go in Aquarius and square Mars and Sag, where it's just like, you know, maybe you have that one uncle or family member that's like, you look like a weirdo with all this goth stuff, but do you live your, live your life. And you're like, okay, I will. So I think on Saturday, there's like, again, that resistance. Um, but then afterwards, the moon sex selling Mars and Sag is just like, just keep doing, just keep going. Just, you don't need to have the feedback. You don't need to have the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, uh the approval of others to do what it is that you're doing. And then also on Saturday, the sun squares Neptune, which is kind of the bigger highlight for Saturday. And I think the hard part about the sun square Neptune is, again, Neptune just reminds me, I always think of fog and I always think of um, fog lights. I, you know, I think I've said this every year for like the past three years when the sun squares Neptune is um, when you are driving in the mountains or not even in the mountains in the fog, and you think, oh, I can't see that well. Let me turn on my brights. You actually make the fog worse. Um, that's how I look at the sun square Neptune. It's like, it doesn't matter how much more light you shine on it, um, it you're still not gonna have this ability to see. What fog lights do is they light up the road underneath the fog so you could see underneath it and at least see the lines and and you know the, the double yellow line and stuff like that. So when I look at the sun square Neptune, it's like brighter doesn't always mean more, you know, a, a better ability to see. It's about putting the lighting in the right place. And so I think as the sun squares Neptune, if the sun is our, our energy, our vitality, our willpower, and it's in Sag where it's just, you know, going off caffeine and, and, and high hopes and dreams, um, that moon squaring Neptune is uh, kind of like, you know, am I like, am I just being delusional? Is, is this the, the right direction? And it doesn't matter how much you lean more into that. Like, well, I can, you know, manifest anything and, and, and pursue this. Like, there's still going to be just that, like, again, if you lean even harder into this Sag stuff, you're probably even going to get more confusion and overwhelming. And I think like, while that energy is good to maintain, it's about putting that energy in the right place. Like, again, coming back to that idea of what goals that we set, and, you know, if you set up a goal that is outside of your control and you're going to attach your, you know, um, personal worth to that achievement of that goal, like you're going to be really disappointed. So let's put our opti let's put our um, optimism and our energy in the right place. And then, you know, again, with the sun square Neptune, it's like, oh, well, I will. Will I even be able to hit this? Am I even going to go where I'm going to go? It's like, well, you're still on the path. You're still on the road that you're driving on. But let's put the lights on like what? Again, we need to pay attention to the road. We're not going to see every building because of the fog. We're going to just look at the road right now. Let's just focus on the path. And then by Sunday, um, the moon is going to ingress into Pisces. It will then conjoin Saturn, and then it will sextile Jupiter and Mercury. So again, as the moon's in Pisces, you know, um, when it comes to things like meditation and clearing out your mind and being with the moment, like being, you know, in the like that's something I, you're talking to a sag rising like i'm all fire and air being in the moment and present and how you feel is so difficult for me i just think as the moon conjoins saturn and pisces there's this kind of like both wanting to avoid that like for example getting you know in a moment where you are being more in the moment being more present with your body your mind your soul there is this like resistance to that. There's this kind of like, oh, like I, I, I don't want to look in there. Got to run, got to blast. But as the moon goes into Pisces and conjoins Saturn, this is kind of like a, hey, you're here. Um, chill out. Like it, you don't have to constantly be doing X, Y, and Z. Like sometimes you just need to be like present with yourself and things that don't always look like progress um, can help you in the long run. Like again, it, you know, if you want to do, uh, a bajillion, if you want to work at 100 hours a week, it's like, well, a one way to, you know, optimize that is making sure you're healthy and that you're getting good sleep and that you are, you know, doing the things that your body needs in order to take care of versus if, like if you're just crashing because you put all of your energy and everything, it's like, well, how much more time are you losing? And so I just look at the moon and Pisces conjoining Saturn as like a, you're going to be stuck being in that moment 
like, again, with your emotions, with your, you know, soul, with your, you know, beliefs, and you can either honor that moment or like resist it. And I just think resisting it isn't going to work all that well, um, cause you're going to be there anyway. It's like traffic. Um, you know, again, I've said this before, like if you're from California, you get it. Like here in Denver, people lose it over traffic. It's just, it's there like heaven forbid they can't, you know, there's, you know, more than seven people on the 25. Um, but in California, it's like, it's expected. And so when you're in traffic, you just vibe with it. You're just like, all right, here I am. This is how it goes. Let me listen to my music, maybe scroll a little bit. And that's how I look at the moon and Pisces conjoining Saturn is like, you can have this anxiousness and nervousness about like being still and about not moving forward the way that you want to, or you can just be with that moment because there's no changing it. And then afterwards, as the moon conjoins Saturn, it's going to sextile Jupiter and Mercury, where again, like the, this, like what's nice about that moment is like, sure, you might hit a wall when the moon conjoins Saturn, but then afterwards as it sextiles Jupiter and Mercury, it's like, this might give you more time to like, think about things, um, versus being like, uh, oh, you know, how am I going to get around this traffic? And let me, let me go through this way. Let me look up on the phone. It's like, now you're being so worried about a situation that is out of your control when you could just take that time in traffic to zone out and like, again, think about where you're at in life. Think about what it is that you want to do. And when I say it that way, I'm talking about like the Jupiter Mercury stuff. It's like Mercury's in Capricorn retrograde. We're changing some plans up and it's <clears throat> all this Jupiter and Taurus stuff that we're getting ready to station direct with. And it's like, what do we want to move forward with? Where do we want to um, grow in our lives? What do we want to have more abundance in our lives? What are we trying to take advantage more of? And I just think the moon in Pisces is like maybe having that still moment is going to allow you to work through things. It's like sometimes when you're so overwhelmed with everything and trying to have like a system and plan, it is a lot harder to just sit in silence and let ideas come to you. And that's what I think Sunday is good for, even though it might be like, hey, you know, for example, your flight might be delayed at, at an airport and you can sit there and be frustrated with it or you can be like, okay, like I'm gonna just be with my thoughts. And maybe think of other things rather than being like, oh, well, you know, fuck, how am I going to get there and, and change this and change that? Like, just be open to how things are going to happen. Like, don't resist them. And that's this week, guys. Um, pretty interesting week, in my opinion, and because this is getting us ready for the beginning of the year where everything starts to move forward and it's all about business. Um, next week, we have Mercury retrograde making a trine to Jupiter. This is awesome for, again, creating solutions, seeing a little bit more of the results that we get from implementing these changes. We have Venus opposite Uranus. When I was doing the month ahead horoscopes on Patreon, it's very like um, touching the hot stove again, realizing, ah, uh, yes, I don't like touching the hot stove. Um, we get the Mercury Kazemi slash solstice. This is, in my opinion, a really big vibe shift of like the Mercury Kazemi is essentially you realize what the problem was and now you realize what the solution is because you're aware of what the problem was. Um, and then the solstice happens. We're now in winter, uh, sun's in Capricorn. Time to just like, again, focus on business and shit like that. Uh, then Mercury will retrograde back into Sagittarius where this is, again, reframing our, you know, uh, our beliefs and our thoughts um, and trying to untangle all of that. So anyway, um, that's what we got this week. That's what's going on next week. Uh, make sure you like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And with that being said, I guess I'll be seeing you guys next week.